that we're to know the time that we're living in. Verse number 11, Romans 13 and verse 11. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now, there's a good way that the Bible uses that word salvation sometimes. That salvation there is talking about when the Lord actually comes and gets us and takes us out. We have salvation now. The second you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be that part of salvation will be when the Lord comes. Verse 12, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Look at verse 12. The night, the night is far spent. He said the night time's about over, day is at hand. I want to preach to you tonight on the subject, night time. Now, the period that you and I live in, in Bible prophecy, is referred to as night time. Night time is a time when the sun is gone the moon is shining, it's dark, and you get awful sleepy. Do you hear what I said? The sun is gone, the moon is shining, it's very dark, and you get awful sleepy. It's hard to stay awake. That describes the time that you and I are living in. Let me explain that. If you know anything about about Bible types, you know that in the Bible, the sun is a picture or a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. The S-U-N is a picture of the S-O-N. It's odd that those two words pronounced just alike, but they are a picture of each other. Let me show you some scriptures. Well, I'm going to do a little, just a little brief Bible study for a couple of minutes here before I actually bring you the outline of the message. Turning your Bible to Psalm 19. You might want to mark these scriptures. Now look at it. If you don't look at it, you might not know if I'm telling you right or not. Psalm chapter 19, the Bible talk, talks about the sun and is going forth, uh, uh, coming out of the clouds and he's coming out as a bridegroom. Now you'll notice here that in, in the clouds and the sky, the Bible said the Lord set a tabernacle for the sun. See in Psalm 19 verse 4, look at verse 5, which is as a bridegroom. Now the two best words for understanding the Bible are like and as. You'll never get the Bible much out of it till you get those little words like and as. The Bible will say the kingdom of heaven is like. Or a man, the kingdom of heaven is as. Here he said, the sun, the sun that shines in the sky is as a bridegroom. That's the picture of the Lord. Jesus coming out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. My, my. And the next verse, if you want to carry that on prophetically, said that nothing will be able to hide from the heat. The sun, S-U-N, puts forth heat, and the sun, S-O-N, puts forth heat at His second coming, at the second advent. Now, let me before I show you some more Scripture, remember this. Does anybody here know on what day God created the sun, S-U-N? Fourth day, right? The Bible said them evening in the morning the first day, evening in the morning the second day, evening in the morning the third day. And on the fourth day, God created the sun, S-U-N. Then the Lord told us over in the book of Second Peter that one day is as a thousand years with the Lord, and a thousand years is as one day. So prophetically speaking, you have one thousand, two thousand, 3,000, 4,000, and the sun comes. The S-O-N comes on the fourth day of 1,000 years representing a day. Then you have the fifth day, 
We've had almost two days since Jesus came. Remember, the Lord made everything in six days. Now, you can believe what you want to. I believe the Bible in, in, I believe the Bible teaches that those were six literal 24 hour periods that God made everything. You say, well now preacher, what about these 20 million year old rocks that people have found? There's two little problems with believing that. Number one is their, their experiments are not really the most accurate in the world. They have tested things that were alive and the experiments said that they were dead for many, many thousands of years. So before I started out in the Bible, I'd get a little bit more accurate experiments on, uh, on those age of rocks. The other thing is, who, well there's another thing I just thought of. There's another thing for rejecting that teaching. And that is, we don't know how much time may have elapsed from the time God made everything before He put Adam and Eve on the ground. We know that He made Adam on the fifth or the sixth day, but we don't know what happened between verse 1 and verse 2. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then, there's a lot of time there, then He went to work on it. Six days and six nights. There's another thing. The other thing is, if there was a 20 million year old rock, there wouldn't be nothing that would contradict the Bible there if they proved it was 20 million years old. You say, well, the Bible teaches man has only been here 6,000 years. That's absolutely correct. That's how long man has been here. You say, well, where did them 20 million year old... You don't know. God might have made a 20 million year old rock 6,000 years ago. You ever thought of that? Wouldn't be no trouble for the Lord to do that. He knew how these scientists would be in the 20th century. He knew these skeptics said, okay, I'll just give them fools something to break their neck on. They don't want to believe me. So, bam, let there be a rock 20 million years old. And there it is. And they think that it's been... The, no, that's no problem with the Lord. The Lord can make a 20 million year old man if He wants to. I mean, He could have kept Elvis from dying. Brother, God can do anything. And my dear friends, He done it in six days. Now, the Lord did not do take six days and nights to create because He had to. He could have, on the very first second, said, Blam! And everything would have been here. But He didn't. You know why the Lord didn't? He's showing us something. You know what He's showing us? He's showing us the schedule of how He's going to run this world. He run that thing six days, and on the seventh day, He rested. That seventh day was called the day of rest. God did not rest on that seventh day because He was tired. God don't get tired. God rested the seventh day to show me and you something. In Bible prophecy, each one of those days represent 1,000 years. He gives man 6,000 years. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then He rests the seventh. That seventh day of rest Last 1,000 years, that's the millennial reign when the Lord will run the show. According to that, out of those 6,000 years that God gave man, we are at 5,992. Now, if that calendar is right, 5,992 right now, and God's only given them 6,000. You say, Brother Danny, are you saying the Lord's coming back within eight years? I'd say He's coming back much, much, much sooner than that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe He won't. I don't know for sure. But I'll tell you one thing. We know that we go up in the rapture, and there's going to be seven years of tribulation, right? After that seven years of tribulation, 
Revelation, the sky is going to open up. That white horse is going to appear in Revelation 19.11. All of us that are saved, we're going to be saddled up. And buddy, we're going to be on our white horses. And here we're going to come. Here we're going to come. Down through the sky. Right behind the Lord on our white horse. And brother, we're going to sit down and the Lord's going to take over the whole shebang. And He's going to rule for one thousand years. That there's got to be seven years of tribulation before that. We are at 1992. We have two days since the Lord come. One thousand, two thousand. Out of those last two days, two thousand years, we are at one thousand nine hundred and ninety-two. Seven years of tribulation means that we have maybe a year, maybe six months, maybe six days, maybe six hours. We don't know when the Lord's coming. I'll tell you one thing. Right now over in Israel, they are putting up signs. Somebody told me the other day, I believe it was in Alabama, that a, a, that a missionary had reported that they're putting up great big billboards all over Israel that say the Messiah is coming soon. Now, they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They're still expecting their Messiah to come. You know who that'll be? That'll be the Antichrist. He'll come and they'll think He's the Christ and they make a covenant with Him for seven years during the tribulation. So, somehow or another, those Jewish rabbis have figured that that Messiah is coming soon. I want to tell you something, brother. If that Messiah is coming soon, our Messiah is coming sooner. Because we're going to be gone when He gets here. I don't know how long that will be, but to hold a fort, brother, we're running out of time. The Lord's coming back. For years and years and years, people have described this time that you and I live in as night time. Turn to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. That's your last book in the Old Testament. Let me show you something here from the lips of God's prophet. By Malachi chapter number 4. And look with me in the Word of God. You know what this is talking about? This is talking about the advent. This ain't talking about the rapture of the church. It's talking about the advent when the Lord returns in power and in glory. Now, that's what, what messed up them Jehovah Witnesses. They thought verse number 1 was talking about hell. That ain't talking about hell. That's talking about when the Lord burns them up, literally, when He comes back in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the Gospel. But look at you. He's going to burn them up as stubble there in chapter 4 and verse 1. Look at verse 2. Now, if you miss this reference, you're not a very good Bible study. If you miss this application, you're not, you don't know a whole lot about the Word of God. Look at verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son... Look how it's spelled. It's spelled S-U-N, but it's talking about Jesus. Don't tell me God didn't intend for that Son to be a picture of His Son, the S-O-N. He did. Shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. There's when everybody's going to get healed. We'll get to that in a minute. Shall arise with healing in His wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as cows of the stall. Ye shall tread down the wicked, and they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I do this, saith the Lord of hosts. When we come down on them horses, the Lord's going to just burn everything up in His path. It's like one of them flamethrowers. Everything within our whole valley down through there is just going to burn up and there'll be as ashes under our feet. So says the Word of God. Now, you know what that sun does? That sun goes down in the evening. When it goes down in the evening, it's red. As you see it, that's a picture of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ where they shed His blood and nailed Him nails in His hand. Then it goes down, that's a picture of His burial. But the next morning, hallelujah, it comes back up. That's a picture of His resurrection. And it's also a picture of the second coming because when it comes the next morning, it's red again. And it said when He comes back, his best 
is going to be dipped in blood, and brother, he's going to scatter his enemies. So, the Son is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. The moon in the Bible is a picture of the church. Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Turn with me there. Now, I'm going to give you several verses here. Song of Solomon, chapter number 6. You know, uh, this uh, uh, kind of a unusual, strange little book there about in the middle of your Old Testament. And uh, I want you to look at a few verses with me. Just before the book of Isaiah. If you see Isaiah, you've gone too far. Go back to your left there a little bit. Song of Solomon, chapter number 6 and verse number Ten. Song of Solomon. As you know, the picture here in the book of Song of Solomon is the bridegroom's a picture of the Lord Jesus. The bride is pictured by the church prophetically. Here, hey, look here as the bride speaks. In Song of Solomon chapter 6 and verse number 9, it's talking about that bride. My dove, my undefiled is but one. Hallelujah. Boy, that's the way the Lord's going to to see his bride, my undefiled, my dove. Listen, there's a lot of people see his fault with the church tonight. There's a lot of people will point their finger at God's church tonight. But when he sees her, he says, my dove. Amen? Thank God he sees us as his undefiled. Amen? And the Lord looks at us there in verse 10. He saw her. Look at verse 10. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon. See that? Clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. That next, that next verse, when old preacher said he went to seminary, and look what that next verse said he done. I went down into the garden of nuts. That ain't got nothing to do with the sermon. I just seen it there. But I tell you what, brother, the Lord looked there and he spoke that church and he said, he said there, he said she's fair as the moon. Now, remember this. The sun is a picture of what? Who? The Lord Jesus Christ. He's gone. It's night time. The sun's went down. He's gone back to heaven. Now all the moon, all the night, the, that night time, we see mo the moon's light. That's a picture of the church. The moon don't have no light of its own. Every bit of light the moon has is reflected off the sun. So if you got the world, let's say, uh, Let's say the world is right here tonight, and one of them lights up there is the sun, and here would be the moon. And you're living on this side of the world, the sun's gone down, but the sun's shining on that moon, and you can see that light reflecting. When you go out tonight and see the moon shining, you are going to see the reflection of the sun on the other side of the world shining on the moon. And ladies and gentlemen, that moon is a picture of you and I. All the way through the Word of God, it's pictured. By the way, you know what happens? You know what hap You know what they call it when the world comes between the sun and the moon? They call that an eclipse because it blocks out the sun's light. That's what's happened to a lot of churches. The world has come between them and the Son of God. And they're dark. And don't let no light shine no more. We cannot let the world come between us and the Lord or we don't have no light to shine to a lost and dying world. So, look at here. The night, the time that me and you are living in or it is called night time. Stars in the Bible picture soul winners. Now, I don't take time to go into all of that. That's in Daniel chapter 12. If you don't look at it when you get home. But tonight, right quickly, I'll never get to the message if I don't get right into this. We are living in the time that is called night time. Now watch. Here's the Lord. Let's say here is 1000 A.D. 2000, I mean, I'm sorry, 4000 B.C. 3000 B.C. 2000 B.C. 1000 B.C. And the Lord comes and dies on the cross. Let's say that right there represents the cross. That's four days. Then before the Lord comes back, you have 
the fifth day and the sixth day. There's the fifth thousand years and the sixth thousand years. Then that seventh is going to be when we rule and reign with Him. Now, I don't know the dates. It may be a long time before the Lord comes back. The calendar may be off. He may choose to mix it up a little bit. But if He did do it by that schedule, the night time would be from the time the sun went down until the time the sun comes up. Now, that would put me and you, the church age, 2,000 years like a circle like this. And the Lord went back to heaven. It got dark. The moon shines during these 2,000 years. And then the Lord comes back. It gets darkest right before daylight. And that's the tribulation. Right? Now, listen. In the Bible, they had what they call the watch of the night. You ever read that in your Bible? He'll, he'll, well, in the watch of the night. Have you ever read in the Old Testament where he told that prophet, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The morning come, day cometh and also the night. Have you ever read, he come in the evening watch and they did this in the morning watch. What they done? They divided up that night into four parts. It was called four watches. Now, if you know anything about the Bible, you know that in, in, in Jewish history, and the way God did it, the day began at six o'clock in the evening. In other words, the Jewish Sabbath began on Friday evening at six o'clock, went from to Saturday evening at six o'clock. You don't know many seven day disadvantages that keep it holy from six o'clock Friday evening to six o'clock Saturday evening, because it ain't even the Jewish Sabbath here when it is over in Jerusalem. Now, that's called the night time. Six in the evening till six in the morning. Six in the morning to six in the evening is called daytime. The Lord said, are there not twelve hours in a day? You remember that? Now, if there's twelve hours in a day, brother... There's twelve hours in the night. And the day started at six in the morning, ended at six in the evening. The evening watch would be, as you've studied the Word of God, you know, would be from six o'clock in the evening till nine in the evening. The second watch would be from nine in the evening till twelve midnight. The third watch would be from 12 midnight to 3 o'clock in the morning. And the fourth watch, or they, they would call it the cock crowing, would be from 3 in the morning till 6 o'clock. Now, there are four watches in the night. Remember where night time is. It's from the time Jesus went back to heaven till He sets up His throne or then He comes back after us. Watch it. There's four parts. The evening watch, three or six to nine. That other than the second watch, nine to twelve. That third watch, twelve to three. That fourth watch, three to six. And night time's over. The day dawns and the day star rises in our hearts and the sun comes up and weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning and all those wonderful scriptures start fitting in. You got that? Now, if these 2,000 years represent the last two days, represent night time, then we divide that night time into four parts of 500 years each. From the time the Lord went back to heaven to 1500 A.D. was from 6 to 9. That's called the evening watch. From 1500 to the year... Two, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. From one, zero to 500. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. From zero to 500 would be the first watch. 
from 500 A.D. to 1000 A.D. would be the second watch, midnight. From 1000 A.D. to 1500 A.D. would be the third watch. And from 1500 to 2000 A.D., which is only eight years from now, would be the fourth watch. Okay, you got that? Take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter number 13. Mark chapter number 13, and let's see how it fits. I really had planned on giving you some charts and things when I preached on this, but actually this was the introduction to the message. So I might just have to leave off the message and preach an introduction. But anyway, Mark chapter 13. I get started talking about this stuff, it gets me excited. Mark chapter 13, and look at verse number 35. Now you remember, the Lord don't say nothing for nothing. The Lord don't say anything that don't have a purpose and a meaning. Look here at Mark chapter 13, and look down there at verse 35. You know what He said? He said, watch. Watch for the Lord to come. Watch ye therefore. For ye know not when the Master of the house cometh. At even... There's your first watch. Or at midnight, there's your second watch. Or at the cock crowing, three o'clock in the morning. You ever heard them roosters crow about three o'clock in the morning? They'll do it. How many of you ever heard a rooster crow early about three or four o'clock in the morning? <laughs> you know, you can hear them. And it ain't even nowhere near daylight. Cock crowing three o'clock in the morning or in the morning. Now, you know what he said? He said, I'm going to come in one of them watches. He said, I ain't going, he said, I'm going to come either at the evening or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly, he finds you what? Sleeping. You know what you like to do at night? Sleep. You know what most churches are doing tonight? They're asleep. You know what I do in revivals? I just sound off like an alarm clock. I go in there and go, ding, 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 for five straight nights. And sometimes you'll see some old boy go, where have I been? I ain't been serving God. Preacher, I want to... He got woke up. Do you know the devil's lulled most churches in America to sleep tonight? Did you know everybody in the world hates an alarm clock? I hate alarm clock, but we better thank God for them. You wouldn't have a job if they wasn't, they wasn't no such thing. But he ever, listen, I despise to hear that thing, don't you? I don't know how, what time you get up in the morning. There's probably people here probably that's get up at five o'clock in the morning, five thirty in the morning, six o'clock. Boy, you're laying there just in never, never land. It feels so good. Them covers are so snug. Oh, your toes are, are in there all warm. And all of a sudden, you jump up and go, good night. What was that? If you had a shotgun sometimes, you'd blow that thing out the wall, wouldn't you? Everybody hates an alarm clock. Shut up! Now, I know what some of you do. You reach over and push that little old button. That's the craziest thing. Then you've got to go through that torture twice of waking up. Oh, I just want to sleep ten more minutes. You just get back to sleep. Ding, 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 ding. Sometimes people grab them things, sling them across them. That's what a preacher is. My job is to get up here and say, Wake up! The Lord's coming! Prepare to meet God! He says, Shut up! Don't bother me! Leave me alone! I'm enjoying this! See, this is not time, that day that we're living in. Folks, you know as good as I do, you get out and travel around and visit churches. Son, they're just little, you can see little Z's coming out the top of them. When you pull up in, and I ain't talking about just physically, of course they're that too. Lord, I've seen some motley looking crowds, son. When I got up and sent her like you. You know, honest, the whole service, they're asleep. Now, you say, well, Brother Danny, how do we know when the Lord's going to come? We don't know exactly, but let me give you a little hint. Mark, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 14. Look at here. This is real interesting. This is real good. Matthew chapter number 14. 
Boy, when I seen this one day, I said, glory to God, that's the Lord dropping us some hints. He'll do it, you know. He don't do nothing unless... He said, that day should not overtake you as a thief. He said, I'm going to come as a thief in the what? Night. He didn't say that for nothing, brother. This is night time, remember? 500 A.D., 1000 A.D. Oh, yeah. Before you look at Matthew 14... And it got down here to 3 o'clock in the morning, that's 1500, uh, 1500 A.D. The cock crows. You know what happened in 1500 A.D.? Do you know what they called the years before that? From one, 12 o'clock, they call it the Dark Ages. You know why they call it the Dark Ages? Because the church was forced underground and there's an old fella come out crowing and his name was Martin Luther. And brother, they call him the day, the, the day star of the Reformation. And them old boy come out and says, <laughs> and brother, they begin the Protestant Reformation. 1500 A.D. That's right on God's timetable. That's when the cock crowed. God's trying to tell us when He's going to wind this thing up. Matthew 14. You want to see when He's coming? Matthew chapter 14. Now you say, oh, well, I don't know. Your problem is believing your Bible, buddy. Your problem is believing your Bible. You look what the book says. I'm giving you the Bible tonight. I'm not a wild-eyed fanatic seeing visions and dreaming dreams and telling you what I... Brother, I'm talking to you about what the book says. Matthew chapter 14, verse 24. Matthew chapter 14, verse 24. The ship, picture of us, our life, we're tossed to and fro. The ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. Lord, Mercy, that's us. The Supreme Court throws prayer in the Bible out. They get out and they outlaw the Word of God. And the ship is tossed. And the wind was contrary. Amen. Look at verse 25 and shout, Christian. But in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw Him, they was glad. Brother, that old ship was out there. They'd been out all night long. The first watch went by, he didn't come. The second watch went by, he didn't come. The third watch went by, he didn't come. But in the fourth watch of the night, the Lord come out. He said, be not afraid. And they said, there he is. That's what happened in the fourth watch of the night. That's the time we're living in, thank God. Buddy, I ain't got time to get in on all of it tonight, but you've got a Bible that tells you everything you need to know and how to be ready. Five six. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. The Bible said in Proverbs ten five, He that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. The Bible said in Proverbs twenty thirteen, Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. At the judgment seat of Christ, no doubt. Proverbs twenty three twenty one said, Drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. You won't have those white garments. To to live with and show off and live with in heaven forever and ever and ever. The Bible says it is high time to awake and sleep. You know the hardest thing you can do is try to stay up all night and wait on somebody. Now I can do pretty good. I do it driving. I drove to four thirty yesterday morning. I drove five hundred miles there and almost two hundred and fifty miles down there. Laurie drove about all the way down there. I drove back. Buddy, I can make it pretty good. Till I'm, you know me, I've got a lot of energy. And I, I'm, it takes me a long time to wind down. Uh, somebody told me the other day, she said, she said, my husband's a preacher. And she said, when he preaches on Sunday morning, he just comes home and dies. I said, man, when I, after I get through preaching, I'll go home tonight and my head's just going to be going... And it takes hours for me to settle down. And so I can drive real good. One o'clock, two o'clock, I'm ready for some ice. I stopped and got me a big cup of ice. You know, because you, I tried drinking drinks, but you, you know, you can't drink but so many drinks. And then you're going to be stopping every 15 miles. And so I eat ice. <laughs> so I chew this ice. You know, that's a good way to stay away. I was chewing it and chewing it and chewing it. And I was listening to tapes and chewing that ice. Well, I do pretty good. 
But they, you know, after 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't know. Boy, oh boy. I remember when I worked the third shift. And I had to go in on Sunday night. That's the hardest time. When it about 4 o'clock in the morning, that old machine be going... My eyes start crossing. I've seen visions. Really? I, I thought I'd seen a man fall in front of me the other day when I was driving out to uh, Alabama. And I was on like five lanes of traffic. Atlanta. Everybody flying like this. And I thought, it looked just like a man fell right in front of my car. I went, and I, and I kept on going down the road like that. Boy, that woke me up, buddy. That woke me up. That's dangerous, don't I? I ain't but I had to get there. I had to preach that night. I, when I'm coming back, I'm rested up. But boy, when I'm going, Lord, in mercy. And I remember, it's hard to stay awake. You can't, you can't just, if you're like most people, you can't just sit here like this and stay awake all night. You've got to get up and do something. Walk around. I have stopped before. I don't know when this water's been in here. Probably since last. I have stopped before. Went... <laughs> have you ever done that? Hadn't you ever done that? So I went in just slugging in my face. Got all soaking wet. Everything. Just anything to keep myself awake. You know why? Because I knew, buddy, I was going to kill my fool self. And I've seen enough wrecks on the highway. And I've seen one the other day. I've seen about everywhere I go. I've seen enough people out there getting killed. I think, I don't want that to happen to me. I'm going to keep myself awake. And the same thing is true. Listen to me. The same thing is true in living for God. You just sit there and do nothing. You'll go to sleep on God. You won't have no spiritual discernment. Won't have no spiritual life. You've got to stay busy. Listen, I've seen so many people go to sleep on God. I think uh, Joey over yonder, me and him got saved in the same revival meeting. I can look down through the years, and most of them like this right now. They're in wrecks, man. They're in the house, not doing anything. You know what you have to do? You have to make yourself stay awake sometimes. We gotta stay awake till he comes. We gotta hold the fort till Jesus comes. Oh, I'm excited and thrilled tonight. It thrills my very soul to think about that God chose a little old group like us down here in North Carolina that we might very well get to see the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ and go home to be with the Lord. Woo! That's shouting ground. Lord in mercy, if that don't put something down in your soul, you ought to just get up and come to the altar and read your Bible and say, God, I want to look forward to your coming back. God didn't let D.L. Moody see it. God didn't let Charles Spurgeon see it. Or Billy Sunday see it. God's let us. Us! Our youth choir. Our mountain girls. Our Parker family. Our, our Sunday school teachers alive in 1992. Whew, what a what a glorious opportunity! Wouldn't we want to be standing wide awake, holding the fort, being faithful when He comes? I know a lot of people that's quit, and when the Lord comes back, they're going to be ashamed. Sometimes people sleep through their greatest hour of opportunity. Samson. You know what he done? He went to sleep at the wrong time, buddy. He laid that old head down and old what's her name? Delilah started running her fingers. <laughs> Who would you say? Share. <laughs> Lord, I hope it was. He could beat that, I bet you. There she's the old Sammy. Do you love me? Why, you know I love you, honey. Well, how come you're so strong? Well, I ain't supposed to tell nobody that. Now, if you loved me, there would be no secrets. I ain't so sure that's biblical or not, you know. It just hit me. <laughs> well, think about that. If you loved me, there would be no secrets. Now, she talked, she talked him into telling him where power come. And he lost his power, brother, or his power, rather. You know what? When he woke up, she said, the Philistines be upon you. And buddy, he jumped up and grabbed something. He said, ah, boy, and they grabbed his arms. 
and he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. There's a lot of churches one of these days going to jump up and say, all right, it's time to do something for God. And that Lord has departed. Brother, the Jews, the, the, the disciples, when the Lord came there and He told them, He said, listen, sit you here and pray. Well, I'll go over here. He went over here and prayed. He come back and what was they doing? They was asleep. They had seen Him raise the dead. They had seen Him feed 5,000. They had seen Him uh, work miracles and all that. And their hour of opportunity when they could have really shown, when they could have really stood for Him and made a difference, they slept. That's what a lot of people are doing now. This is the time to shine, man. Young preachers, there has never been a better time to get out and preach the gospel on the street corners. That's what we're going to do out there next Saturday night. Shine, brother. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You say, Brother Danny, it's awful dark outside. I know that's true. But boy, that makes the light that much brighter. Amen? I ain't got time to get to all of it tonight. But I'll tell you somebody else. The Jews missed their hour. They was asleep. I remember one time a bunch of us, Joey, you might have went with us. Went down there. This is right after our first got saved. We used to listen to Big Waggy radio all the time. And they was having an all-night service. And it got up about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I, I said, boys, I'm going to have to drive tomorrow. I'm going to go out in the truck and take me and out. And I had a little old tr truck. And we laid down a piece of foam rubber in the back of it. So I went out there and I was trying to sleep and laying there and kind of dozed off for a little while. And a little while, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, they come out there beating on the door and said, Hey, then, 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 guess what? And I said, what? And he, they said, we got to give our testimony on Big Waggy. But then I'd never been on the radio. I thought, man, tens of thousands of people. And I slept through my hour of opportunity to tell all those people what the Lord done for me. And I thought that's the way a lot of people's going to feel one day at the judgment. You're going to say, oh, no. I slept all those Sundays. I didn't do anything. All I done is sit around the house. Lord, I could have been out witnessing. I could have been out. I could have been giving. I could have been working. I could have been telling people in my community. I could have got a lot of things done. But I slept through it. The Lord's going to say, it's too late now. Now let me give you four things right quick and I'm through. Number one, at night, no one can see very far. That's a, that's a picture of nighttime. Can't see very far. You can't see far at night, buddy. You go out there today, you can see them mountains and everything. Go out there right now and see how far you can see. That's typifying the day men you're living in. There's not many great prophets to tell us what's going to happen. We've had a few blessed, been blessed in this generation past like Clarence Larkin and, and some of those men like Schofield and some of those fellas, Mordecai Ham and all that. But most people are just groping in darkness trying to find their way. In this day and time. Number two, at night, adulterers and thieves are very busy. This character, the, the time me and you are living in will be characterized by wickedness more and more and more. You ever noticed how much more crime and wickedness is committed in the night time? Buddy. Remember you used to sing that song before I got saved? Thank the Lord for the night time. Forget the day. I thought about that after I got to say, the Bible said men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. When people want to do wicked, they go to some old dark, ungodly. You know, that's why they have it dark in bars. That's why they have it dark in discos and dance halls. That's a devil's territory. And adulterers and thieves are busy. But you don't think the adulterers and thieves are busy now? Shh. I mean, I, I ain't got time to preach on it all this evening. Let me, I'm gonna give you some quotes from some modern popular songs. And all these ain't twisted, perverted, heavy metal freaks neither. This Iron Maiden is, of course. Listen to the song that's popular now for young people. Entitled, The Number of the Beast. Quote, 666, The Number of the Beast. 666. The one for you and me. I'm coming back. I will return. And I'll possess your body. And I'll make you burn. I have the fire. I have the force. I have the power to make my evil take its course. That's words to a song by the rock group Iron Maiden. Let me tell you kids something. 
30 years ago, nobody got on stage and sung about 666 being an evil taking over your soul. You don't think... Listen! People say, oh, now, Brother Danny, don't get all excited. It may be a hundred years before the Lord comes. Well, I can tell you one thing. If it's a hundred years, there's going to be a revival or something's going to have to give somewhere. It ain't going to go like this for no hundred years. But if it's going to be a hundred years, our economy's going to collapse and America's going to go down the tube and you, you're going to see the most terrible thing. Disease is going to wipe this population out in a hundred years if something don't change. I don't know when it'll be. I'm not setting dates. I'm saying it don't take a very smart person to look around and think God Almighty's about to do something. <clears throat> Blasphemy is the name of this song by Venom. Quote, Without any fear of God, we're possessed by all that is evil. The death of you, God, we demand. We spit at the virgin you worship, talking to the Catholic Church, and sit at Lord Satan's left hand. Killing children by the dead Kennedys, quote, God told me to skin you alive. I kill children. I love to see them die. I kill children to make their mothers cry. I crush them under my car. I love to hear them scream. I feed them poison candy and spoil their Halloween. My songs, I mean, on tapes, in books, you can get this tape at any record store, in any mall, in any, anywhere in North Carolina you want to get it. We ain't living in the night time. We're not living in the day before the Lord comes. You want to hear what Elton John sings, trying to get kids kill herself through the spirit that's in him? Quote, Elton John. I'm getting bored being part of mankind. There's not a lot to do. This race is a waste of time. People rushing everywhere, swarming around like flies. Think I'll buy myself a 44 and give them all a surprise. Yeah, I think I'm going to kill myself. Cause a little suicide. Let me read you one called Demon Possession. Quote, Shake hands with the devil. Don't be frightened. I won't hurt you. I don't want your silver, your gold. I want your body and your soul. You say, who sung that preacher? Some old perverted maniac from Britain? Chris Christopherson. Why me, Lord? What did I ever do? That was worth love. You better get to doing something, sonny. Come a long way, buddy. From what have I ever done or what did I ever do or to demon possession. Somebody backslid somewhere, brother. And I ain't got time to do it now, but coming up in a few weeks, we have some specials for you. Like Amy Grant. With her new video, Baby, Baby. You seen that video, buddy? That baby's growed up pretty quick. <laughs> He's about this tall and dark and handsome and all that. It ain't her baby. At night time, thieves are busy. Number three, at night time, all light on this earth is artificial. What are you saying? I'm saying go downtown here at night. If you went out there tonight and you walked down to downtown Marion, you probably wouldn't even notice the moon. The reason you wouldn't notice the moon is because of all them artificial lights. All this stuff in here, this is artificial light. You know where you really get a good glimpse of the moon? Out in the country. Now that's typical, brother. That's typical. When you go into a big city, you don't get a good glimpse of a church. You see artificial light. You know where you find a real church? Out in the country. Most of the time. That's where the church shines. Bright. I'm not saying there's not good churches in the city. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, typically, the moonshine is blocked out by the artificial street light. And brother, are we ever living in a day of artificial light? People can't see the real church for all the artificial light shining them in the face. Great. Day in the morning. I, I heard about man praying and some... 
Armstrongs on TV and Christian scientists and Sun Young Moon's going to marry 20,000 couples all at one time next week or something like that. And the, the cults are out and the Jehovah Witnesses and the Hare Krishna's little ponytail sticking out the back of the bald head and all. You know what all that is? That's artificial light so the sinners can't see the real moon. Snake handler was fooling around with a snake the other day, and or not long ago he died. One of them bit the sheriff that come and arrested him, broke up the meeting, and bit the preacher, and the preacher died. And some some reverend and some sister killed a four year old kid, choking him around the neck, trying to cast the demons out of him in a church service. You imagine that taking a four year old kid and say. <laughs> and kill the kid trying to cast the demon. I don't know. Kid, the demons ain't in him. I know. I don't know who they're in, but they ain't in the young and they ain't them people choking him to death, probably. We got some weird light coming around. This guy gets on the radio and he says, "Now, friends, I have your letter before me today. You can tell by the way they talk." that something's weird about them. They get right in the TV camera and say, Glory to God. It is so good that I've got to hear from you this week. I mean, you know, there's something wrong with somebody that acts like that. <laughs> Nobody acts like that. That's embarrassing to me to do that in front of y'all. I look like an idiot. I know I did. That's what they do on TV. And the sinners turn that on, they think, that is a preacher. Beat it all, they got a permanent in their hair. I ain't naming no names. <laughs> but I tell you something, brother. Yeah, that's artificial light. Hey, something wrong with somebody that talks like that. One guy goes on and he wears a toupee, you know, and he says, Now praise God, praise God. The Lord is going to heal you, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Nobody acts like that in their right mind. Good night, brother. I mean, you know what, though? They can't see the moon shine for all this artificial junk. Guy got the, one certain Methodist church is having a dance for their young people downstairs. Striper concerts. Claiming that's gospel. That's artificial life. It's not the right thing, brother. It's not the right thing. I can't stand them guys. Get on there. I can't stand them. They're saying, if you have enough faith, you'll be healed. If you have enough faith, you'll be healed. If you have enough, all you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe. And then beg for money for 15 minutes. Why don't they get some of that faith they're preaching about? They had all that faith. They all they'd have to do is just believe God to send them in the money and they'd have it. Now, I don't, listen, I believe God can heal. Don't you get me wrong. God can do anything. God can heal. If I get sick, I pray the Lord to touch me. I pray the Lord to touch me before I get sick. I prayed that today or yesterday. And I, I said, God, keep us healthy. And I believe God healed. But son, there's a, there's a difference between the healing power of God and some nut runner. That, have you ever noticed that every single one of them guys that heal people wears glasses? I ain't never seen one yet that didn't. Now, what do they wear glasses for? They're going to heal cancer and raise people from the dead. Got a big pair of glasses on that thick. All they'd have to do is go, think, where's all that faith, man? Surely you can get 20-20 vision. That's like a bald-headed barber just selling a man something to grow hair on his head. You crazy or something? I mean, if it worked, he'd be using it. Lord, have mercy. We're living in a day of artificial light. Hell. One guy got on the radio and he said, Now, friend, put your hand on the back of the radio for a point of contact. Somebody, somebody said, Stick your hand in that radio if you really want a point of contact. <laughs> you get one then. At night, all light is artificial. Right quick, let me give you this last one and I'll be through. At night time, you get sleepier and sleepier right before the sun comes up. That's, I've had people tell me all the time, Brother Danny, it's never been so hard to stay right with God as it is now. You know why that is? The sun's getting ready to come up. 
sun is coming up. This thing's about over with, people. We're just about to wind it up. I wouldn't be surprised at all unless we get go out in some untimely cause of death or an accident or something like that. People sitting in here tonight could very well live to see Jesus come back in the clouds. The church has waited for nearly 2,000 years. If you come tonight, would you be ready? You got everything fixed up? Have you got your life in order? And I, I know that would scare all of us. It'd scare me silly if I thought I was going to have to face the Lord. And I, but brother, if I know my heart, I've got my life in order. I'm not deliberately holding anything wrong in my heart tonight. I'm not perfect. But brother, God knows my heart. I don't want nothing in my heart wrong. Jesus might come tonight. And there's people sitting in here tonight, just as sure as I'm standing here, your life ain't right. You say, preacher, when you talk about Jesus coming back, it scares me. I've got myself all messed up. I'm backslid. I'll tell you what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to wake up. You're going to have to shake yourself. And it ain't going to be easy. Because when you're asleep, it's hard to make yourself wake up. You just want to lay there just another minute. Oh, Brother Danny, I know you're right, but please just let me alone one more week. Oh, I'll, I'll wake up in a little bit. You know what you got to do? you got to make yourself get up. Make yourself. Let's we'll stand and bow our head. Well, tonight, I tried to preach you a message on night time. God spoke to your heart tonight as a Christian. While they're getting us a song... Will you be holding the fort when the Lord comes back? There's someone here tonight that say, Preacher, Preacher, I need to wake up. Jesus may be coming in the next few days or weeks or months. I don't know when the Lord's coming. It may be 10 years. It may be 20, 30 years. I don't know. Nobody knows. But it may be 10 minutes. Or ten hours. And if you're not ready, I'd be getting down here on this altar and I'd be getting ready. Father, do what ought to be done tonight in our hearts. Lord, we ain't much. But what we are is Yours. And by Your grace, here we are, Lord. And help us to do what You'd have us to do. Oh, dear God, have mercy on us, we ask. And help that one this evening that's not ready to meet You to get ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, just come on tonight. Come on, young people. Mom, teenagers.